Hello and welcome to my channel. Hope you're feeling strong. I am. Done 10 miles already. So I'm glad you've joined me near the end of this walk. Got about five more miles to do. So we'll have done 15 miles by the time I finish this vlog. And it's all for the training for the coast to coast in September. And thanks to your advice, I'm building up my kit that I will need for this coast to coast because I'm wild camping it uh, most of the way. Something I need to tell you, a little update is the tent that I got, the Lanshan one, it was great, but it had no instructions. And I was unsure that I was pitching it correctly because there was a big gap at the bottom and that gap was really annoying me. Maybe the fabric in time would have stretched and it would have fitted over correctly, but there was no instructions at all, not even in Chinese. This tent came from China. If I'd taken Border Rambler's advice and uh, spent uh, 60 quid on it straight from China to me, I would have just kept it. Yeah, well worth 60 quid, but not uh, the 120 pound that I paid uh, with no instructions. So I fell out with it. Uh, I did have it in my garden. It withstood uh, Storm Brendan, so it can't be that bad. But I have purchased a new tent and it's the uh, Van Gogh Banshee 200 Pro. I'm sure a lot of you wild campers are aware of that tent. It is a bit heavier, but only a bit. And by the time I've lost a bit of weight, I'll have made up for it. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's the tent that I've got, the uh, Van Gogh Banshee 200 Pro. And it's a great tent, I really do like it. And uh, I will be doing some wild camping. So the wild camping is definitely on its way. Uh, I think I'm happy with this tent so far. So I just thought I would let you know that. Oh yes, and just to let you know, uh, GoPro have taken my money as well. Uh, my money has gone and uh, so I assume that the uh, media module is on its way. Can't wait, can't wait. I bet it's going to be absolutely, surely you would expect an email from GoPro letting me know that it's been dispatched and it's on its way. I haven't received anything. I've received no updates on my order since uh, I ordered it about uh, maybe three weeks ago when it came into stock. So uh, yeah, haven't heard anything from GoPro. I don't expect to. I think they seem to be trying to sneak this out without uh, making a big fuss out of it. And that makes me think that it's gonna be absolutely rubbish. Uh, so what do you think? Do you think the uh, GoPro Hero 8 media module is gonna be any good? Or do you think they're just trying to sneak this out and it's gonna be <laughs> absolute pants? But uh, I really hope that it is gonna be good. It will be a perfect vlogging system if it is. And uh, I won't have to have these extra mics. And uh, as some of you have said, we won't have the trailing cables. The trailing cables are an absolute pain, just waiting to be disconnected. I don't even know which microphone I'm recording into right now. I'll be honest with you, I've got the Rode Video Micro on top there and I'm hoping I'm using that one. But if that one hasn't engaged because of the stupid um, mic adapter, uh, if that one hasn't engaged for whatever reason, uh, then I'm using the uh, internal audio. And on a day like today up here, the wind's going to be blowing and you won't even be able to hear me. Imagine how disappointed I will be if that's the case. <laughs> I've got a bit of a steep climb. I'm gonna be climbing all the way up there. So I've got a bit of a steep climb. I'm taking you to a trig point. So we've got a trig point in this vlog and I'm sure it's called West Nab. So a West Nab trig point is somewhere over this uh, ridge, probably quite a ways over. But uh, yeah, bit of a climb up here now. So yes, my new tent, it's a two man tent. And that's, uh, that's another reason that uh, I swayed towards this one really. Uh, because me and my lass are gonna do a few of the one nighters. She wants to do a few of them with me. And uh, it's a snug two man, I'll tell you that. With two people in that tent, you will be snug. Uh, so, that's one of the reasons that I, I went for it as well, because you can get two in it. The Lanshan one, uh, emphasis on the one, was definitely a uh, bit of a coffin <laughs> at the bottom. Yeah, the Lanshan one was definitely a one-man tent. It's a little bit heavier, the Banshee, but I'm really happy with it. I like the way you can get in it from both sides, and uh, it pitches really good, um, and it's, it feels really solid. So I'm really happy with it. And you're going to be seeing that tent very soon. I am, as we speak, I am uh, I'm looking for some wild camping uh, sites. So uh, yes, I will be doing the wild camping very soon. Let's see if we can get up to this, uh, this trig point up here. 
I've got another totally different subject to talk to you about uh, coming near the end of this vlog. So I hope you're enjoying the vlog so far. Woo! <laughs> this is good training. I thought it was just over the ridge, this uh, trig point, but uh, it was a false horizon. So I've still a long ways to go. So it was quite a climb, I'm a little bit out of breath, but I have done a big walk today. A little bit further to go to the trig point and I'm determined to get to the West Nab trig point and be quite a view from there. The view here is amazing, we've got an amazing view here. And when I get more remote, when I get into these remote areas, I find myself uh, looking behind me a lot more uh, because I feel that the, there should be something out here other than me. And, uh, and I really do believe that there should be something else out here, not just me and you. And uh, that brings me to uh, our wildlife. We have no large predators out here. And I think I'm looking behind me for the wolves. <laughs> I think that's what I'm doing. My instincts are telling me there should be something out here <laughs> that I should be looking out for. Uh, so yeah, I think I'm looking out for the wolves, but they're just not here, are they? And I think that's really sad that they're not here. And uh, there is uh, large projects going on uh, rewilding the UK. And I'd like to know what your thoughts are, what your feelings are on rewilding the UK. Putting animals, uh, natural predators to like deer, uh, back in this, in this land. Um, I actually, believe it or not, I actually am all for it. Even though it would interfere with my wild camp in somewhat shocking. <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, I would love to think that there are wolves uh, around here and that I could stand at the top here and oh! <laughs> and then they would howl back. That would be amazing. I've got to do that. At some point in my life, I've got to stand on the edge of a cliff. Let's do it. Let's, let's go over. Let's do this. Let's go over here. There's a bit of an edge here. And uh, blimey, I've gone off the path. <laughs> I've got my fantastic boots on, my uh, Berghaus super light uh, hiking boots and they are absolutely brilliant. So let's get up on a rock here. It would be fantastic to think that there were wolves around here and we were coexisting with them in the countryside and uh, they definitely would help with the deer population because the deer population just congregates in certain areas in the UK and there's just too many of them there and the wolves would definitely disperse them so I am all for that let's just have a go see if there are any out there oh oh I don't think there's any out there <laughs> I quite enjoyed that. I think I've been wanting to do that, haven't I? So, let me get back on the path. Well, I really enjoyed that more than I thought I would. I might have to do that more often. <laughs> Maybe without you guys watching. Yeah, I'm definitely going to do that again. So, yeah, we... Uh... Woo, a bit chilly up here. So, yes, we, of course, did have bears, lynx and wolves in this country they were the predators and um, I would love to see that back maybe not all of them um, realistically realistically I think the uh, they favor the lynx and it's about a thousand years since we had lynx roaming around here but they are favoring the lynx as a, a predator that they might reintroduce to this country and it would be wonderful to think of that uh, that animal uh, hunting around here and maybe catching sight of one uh, you're lucky if you ever see a lynx, especially here. Um, yeah, so there'll be no howling for lynx. I would love 
to see the wolf reintroduced. I know the, uh, the issues with the farmers and their livestock, but there are things that they can put in place, compensation schemes, that would help with that. It would also apparently be good for tourism. I mean, you'd get me up on places like this, looking out and seeing the wolves hunting and uh, things like that. Yes, it would be absolutely fantastic. And uh, other countries coexist with large predators. Imagine having to coexist with tigers. They do it, uh, so why can't we just uh, coexist with lynx and wolves? What about bears? Mm. So I just thought I would uh, just touch that subject because I'm really interested in it. And I'm interested to know what my subscribers, you guys, think of it as well. So leave your feelings on Rewilding the UK uh, in the uh, comments section below. I'm interested to see what you think about it. So uh, that's about it for this vlog. I'm going to take you to the, uh, the trig point, which is over there. And uh, that's where we're heading and that's where the vlog is going to end. So come on, let's get over to the trig point. trig point is there behind me and it's very windy up here as I'm sure you can hear you always get a good 360 view up at a trig point and this one is no exception still looking out for a few wolves it would be great to just uh, think that they're out there just to just to see them out there would be great so that's it for this vlog I, uh, I upload a vlog every week, so if it's first time on my channel, welcome to my channel and uh, consider subscribing. Then you'll be notified of all my future vlogs. So, until the next one, bye.